don't get too excited. I'm uh, just doing some urban landscape today, local. Um, I know you're jonesing for me to get back out to the desert. Give me some of them on locations, man. But uh, you're gonna have to stay on the methadone drip for just a while longer. Um, I'll get back out to the desert sometime this year, I'm sure. Um, but for now, staying local. And uh, it's actually Easter Sunday, and I'm taking advantage of the um, what will probably be empty streets and empty parking lots um, to get the shot I want. So uh, instead of doing some Easter egg hunting, we're doing a little composition hunting. So it kind of works. Um, and you may notice, I'm finally moved into my office. I'm out of my temporary office at the front of the house and uh, I'm in my nice detached office here now that I've finished the large format online course. This is finally freed up for me to, uh, to move in. And um, I think it's coming together pretty good. I got my uh, scanning slash film review station. I got my workstation, got my skull, chair, culturally appropriated rug. Can you tell I'm a fan of the American Southwest? Can ya? Now there's still plenty more to do. I need to get some big cabinets over there, new cabinet faces, um, and I'm gonna do a big long cabinet here with a uh, countertop, and then that should uh, finally round things off. Um, but uh, it's coming together nicely. I really like it. And um, I love these new desks, by the way. They're adjustable. They go up and down at the touch of a button. They're motorized, and uh, I think that's pretty cool, because sometimes I just don't wanna be breaking my back. Uh, scanning film and reviewing film and working on my my uh, computer here so um, I'm a happy camper it's nice to be in my office finally um, but now the photos today so uh, I'm going to a town called Monrovia it's about 35 to 40 minutes away um, and um, I've scouted these pictures already because uh, I shot a couple of properties for clients out there and um, that's when I saw this subject in the first place and there's actually two uh, compositions I want to get, one on 4x5, one on 6x17. As far as lighting goes, I want to do late afternoon, so I actually got to leave here pretty soon. And um, I also want to do one at proper dusk. So um, I'll be bringing both systems. I got my 6x17 loaded up already. And then um, I'll uh, throw my 4x5 in there as well. And um, be shooting color, Kodak Portrait 160. In fact, I got to make sure that I have uh, sheet film loaded up because I'd really like to avoid breaking out the um, film changing tent and all that so hopefully I got some let's see here TXP TXP empty empty two sheets of 160 great so uh, I gotta load film and then we can hit the road Now, to be honest, these two pictures are going to be so simple to execute, relatively speaking, that um, I'm kind of worried this whole video is only going to be like three minutes long and a little bit anticlimactic. Um, but I got bored today uh, for the first time in a long time because I've just been working nonstop on the online course and then my house. And uh, for the first time today, I actually had downtime. I literally didn't even know what to do or like how to stand. I was, didn't, what do I, like, what do I do? So, um, decided, hell, I'll bring you along with me. Uh, that'll fill the day. And maybe a couple people out there will enjoy seeing this process. I hope, anyway. And, um, got my empty parking lot. So, uh, thank you to the Easter Bunny. Starting with uh, 4x5 here, because the 6x17 shot is the one I want to do at dusk. And truth be told, the 6x17 shot I'm viewing more as a uh, bonus. Um, the 4x5 is what drew me originally, and um, I want to make sure I get that shot. And this uh, this shot, I think, is going to do, do well with a little bit earlier light. Um, but as you can see, I've got these real interesting trees, uh, kind of like Siamese trees. Uh, like Siamese twins. It, ooh, is that PC anymore? Conjoined trees? I don't know, man. Uh, conjoined trees, you know, 
two tree trunks going up into one one canopy thought it was kind of nice a little quirky um, so uh, that's what we'll be shooting and uh, I got my 115 millimeter lens uh, set up here and I've obviously already scouted the shot from when I uh, was out here for work and um, it should be a pretty simple simple shot here I'm gonna need some lens rise to get the trees where I want them and um, this is one of those shots where I was uh, I spent a lot of time really moving around to see how the background changed in relation to the subject because I have these trees off to the right that if they uh, end up behind my foreground trees they'll kind of blend together and you'll lose the sense of the foreground element being separate from the background so moving left and right was really important here uh, higher and lower is really important because the canopy of the tree is going to be blocking or revealing things so really just um, moving around a lot and seeing uh, how the foreground element related to the background until I got the position that I wanted. Now, just a matter of getting it fine-tuned. I'll be waiting for the light. Now, if you uh, follow my channel at all, you know how much I love uh, old, big trees in urban environments. I don't know what it is, but there's something about them. I find myself revering them, like uh, like having deep respect for these big old trees surrounded by all this concrete jungle. Like there's some ancient elders of the community. Um, yeah, I like them. So uh, these obviously caught my eye when I showed up to this property. And by the way, there's two sets of these, of these uh, Siamese trees and um, for the 4x5, I'm isolating the, the better of the two um, in terms of uh, aesthetics and uh, placement in the background and all that. Uh, this one will photograph much better uh, on 4x5. But then the 6x17, I'm going to include both of them. Uh, so it'll be shot from much further back, and we'll have uh, both sets of uh, twin trees. So um, yeah, it'll be fun to shoot these. And uh, I'm going to shoot it in lots of different lighting. I'm going to start you know, shooting it early light like this and then I'll just progress throughout the evening until dusk has uh, finally set on these subjects. Okay, so looks like uh, it's not going to be too difficult to get my full depth of field here on this 115 millimeter lens. Uh, for those of you taking my online course all about large format photography, uh, my bellows delta came out to just two millimeters. So as you know, uh, that's really not too difficult to get a, a depth of field to cover that uh, bellows delta. So uh, no point in using any tilts or anything like that. I'm just going to use the aperture to, uh, to get my full range of focus. We're going to do F22 at 1 15th. Okay. To wait for cars to not be driving by on the street. All right. I think this composition would be quite a bit stronger if that tree just outside the frame on the right wasn't creeping into the edge of the photo. I would much prefer a clean expanse of sky there, like I have on the left side. But believe you me, I tried my damnedest to make that happen. I moved all over the place. Left, right, closer, further, short lens, long lens, nothing got that tree completely out of the frame. At least not without introducing some other issues or distracting elements. Now, I've said this before, but I like to pursue most of my photos these days as individual additions to a much larger body of images that share a similar theme. This certainly adds to some of my previous photos of large trees and urban environments. But more so than that, it utilizes some compositional elements I've incorporated in the past, like the repeating horizontal lines that are somewhat bisecting the image multiple times. 
You'll see that in my 6x17 shot of the old junkyard in Santa Ana. Also, the long stretched out shadows angling downward across a building's wall, like that photo I took of the old garage on Route 66. I suppose these subtle graphical elements being used over and over are part of what constitutes a photographer's uh, quote-unquote style. So I think this shot will look good in a book one day, alongside those other images, bring some cohesiveness between different photos. I also ended up repeating this composition right after the sunset. I don't have any video of that process, though. Sorry, but uh, I wanted to see the same subject without the harsh shadows of sunlight, and instead utilize the soft ambient glow of early dusk. This brought in a color palette and quality of light that I've certainly implemented a few times before in my work, but find myself using it more and more these days. Historically speaking, I've mostly gravitated towards either late afternoon sun or full-on dusk, where the sun has set about 15 to 20 minutes prior, the sky has darkened to that deep blue color, and all the artificial lights have turned on. But I didn't often take photos in that 5 to 10 minute window immediately following sunset. That time where the light is super soft and it's not quite daylight, but it's also not quite dusk yet. I usually found it to be a bit bland, but lately I've really been embracing it. So I'm uh, getting ready for my 6x17 shot and uh, I'm struggling a bit, or, or at least I'm, I'm doubting my initial instincts and um, I'm kind of in a state of deep indecision here. Uh, I've tried from closer up with a wider angle lens and further back with a longer lens and that of course uh, changes the composition quite a bit um, and I just I can't decide which one I like more. Uh, from closer up, the mountain disappears and the trees are really uh, the only thing you can see other than the building. But from further back, you get the mountain in the background, you get more compression, and um, I kind of like that compression, I think. Um, but I, I just, I keep going back and forth. I, I really, I can't decide. So um, I gotta, <laughs> I have to force, force my own hand here because I'm gonna be running out of time before too long. Um, and there's a weird kind of halfway in between where you get like a little bit of the mountain, but I think that looks weirder than having no mountain or having all the mountain. You know, it's like either include it or don't. Um, getting just like a little sliver of it, I think it looks kind of weird. And from closer up, the tree on the left gets a little bit lost on that um, kind of anemic looking tree behind it. So I'm thinking my initial instincts of further back probably going to be the right call. Let's see. Which will be with my 210. And part of this is probably just that I don't normally do pictures like this with my 210. Uh, I don't normally stand this far back but it might be the way to go all right further back with the 210 I'm making the call hope it's the right call now the good news is this Nikkor 210 millimeter happens to be I think my sharpest lens. But the bad news is the battery on my video camera is dying. So uh, at some point here, I'm gonna have to cut you off so I can uh, bring you back in when the light starts to get good. Um, we'll see how soon that is. Yeah, we got a little bit of time. I'm gonna have to get a little further back. It's worried about that, damn it. All right, starting to get a little too much for me. Right there. Let's 
So unsurprisingly, I had to use a little bit of rise on the lens to uh, get the composition where I want, but um, I also had to do quite a bit of shift on the lens. And the reason for that is I have these horizontal lines in the building behind the trees, and I want those to be perfectly horizontal left to right in the composition. So the only way to achieve that is to point the camera directly at the building. So in other words, the film plane has to be perfectly parallel with the, the wall, and that will keep horizontal lines, horizontal left to right. Um, but when I did that, it put my composition way off to the side. It actually clipped one of the trees. So I had to shift to uh, get the composition back to where I want, get both trees in the shot. Um, so I'm all set up now. Um, this is really going to be a dusk shot. That's my, that's my goal. And uh, the reason I want to shoot it at dusk is there's this light pole above the tree on the left. And um, I think at dusk, just having that single light source illuminating the trees from the top but not being included in the frame I think is going to look really cool because you'll have this kind of mysterious out of frame light source illuminating the, uh, the trees. So um, I'm going to do a shot at daytime first because uh, I got four frames per roll I might as well and then uh, once dusk rolls around then I'll, I'll hit it at just the right time to uh, get the street light there illuminating the trees. So uh, first things first, got to focus, uh, get our settings dialed in and then uh, we'll knock out a daytime shot before uh, moving over to dusk. We're gonna do F29 at one eighth of a second. Yep. All right. Wait for cars to pass. Just a little bit of the street off to the right, so I'm getting traffic. Here we go. Helps to cock the shutter. Booyaka, all right. And now, I better save my video battery so I can show you what happens at dusk. Although daytime lighting was not what I originally envisioned for this shot, I do like how this turned out. Probably the biggest advantage to it is that I got really good separation between the foreground tree and the background tree off to the right, due to the background tree being lit up with that late afternoon sunlight. And as you'll see in just a bit here, the later dusk light really robbed the scene of that separation. All right, well, dusk has finally fallen on the landscape and uh, it's looking pretty good. I actually moved the camera back a little bit. I was worried I was framed up just a little too tight. I want to give myself some more breathing room. So uh, it's not exactly the same as the previous composition, but it's pretty damn close and um, I'm all framed up and ready to go. So I do like how that light is shining down from that, uh, that light pole. This will give it some character. The light on the tree on the right is obviously gonna be a lot dimmer than the one on the left because the uh, light pole is above the one on the left. But I think, uh, I think it'll look all right. All right. Don't need to use a super narrow aperture on this because the uh, reproduction ratio isn't super high, but I'm going to do F16 at two seconds, which with reciprocity, two seconds becomes, I believe, three seconds, but I'm going to double check that. Seconds, yep, three seconds. Okay, let's hope the breeze dies down. Here goes nothing. Two, one, go. One, two, three. All right, I think I just missed that car too. Perfect. Now, as always, I'm just gonna take a few shots 
as the light progresses so that I can hit it at precisely the perfect time. As I mentioned, you can see there's a lot less separation between the foreground and background trees on the right. I personally really don't like it when near subjects and far subjects kind of blend together into one jumbled mess. And that happens quite easily when the overlapping near and far subjects are essentially the same color and texture, and they're under the same lighting. I of course did everything I could in terms of placement to bring in more separation between these two, but I had really done everything I could just to get this. Shooting from a little further back and including the mountain, I think was the right call. The compression it created worked out well for these subjects. Gave a nice clean cut foreground, middle ground, and background. I do prefer the vibe of dusk lighting. I pretty much always prefer the vibe of dusk lighting. I know I'm really taking a bold stance by saying dusk has a better mood than midday light. But hey, they don't call it magic hour for nothing. The contrast of soft ambient evening light with harsh artificial light always looks good on scenes like this. This frame is perhaps just a tiny bit early to get the balance I typically like to achieve, but no matter, it was only the first of four exposures I ended up taking at dusk. I kinda wish that Coles sign would light up. That'd be a nice touch. But I'm not gonna hold my breath for that one. Now you really don't want to wait too long on these dust shots because uh, what happens real late in the evening is the artificial lights just uh, dominate the scene and there's no ambient light to fill in any of the shadows. So you get this insanely high contrast light where everything the street lights are hitting is blown out and then any shadow is basically completely pitch black. So you need a, a lot of this ambient light to, uh, to remain in the sky so you can kind of lighten up the shadows created by that artificial light. So it's a fine line between uh, shooting too early and too late, as always. Oh, we're getting into shutter speeds that are longer than I would like. I'm gonna get into four seconds. Six seconds. And for my luck, that car's gonna park right in front of one of the trees. You gotta be shitting me. That's right. Go on, get it! Get into four second territory here. Which becomes six seconds of reciprocity. Hard to not get any cars at that long of a shutter speed, plus there'll be motion in the leaves, which I'm never crazy about, but take what you can get. Ah, oh, too many cars. Kill me. This is frame number two of four I shot at dusk, and at first blush, it probably doesn't look much different from the first frame I just showed you. So what I wanna do here is show you each of the four frames, one after the other, so you can see how the balance between ambient and artificial light changes as the evening progresses. Starting again with frame number one, then frame number two, frame number three, and finally, the last shot of the night, frame number four. You can clearly see how the later you shoot, the more dominant the artificial light becomes and the less influential the ambient light is. The result is higher contrast, blacker shadows, and a darker sky. Also, of course, longer shutter speeds. Personally, I really don't like the look of this last frame, 
Uh, I'm not opposed to some shadows devoid of detail, but this is just too much. You can barely tell where the tree ends and the mountain begins. Now I hit frame number three at just about the perfect timing for most urban scenes, in my opinion. I won't go so far as to say it's perfect for this subject. I think it's actually maybe just a tad late. But generally speaking, this is the balance I aim to achieve in most of my dusk or dawn photos. The artificial light is powerful and its shadows are clearly defined, but there's just enough lingering glow in the sky to pull some detail out of some of the shadows. But given the fact that this subject has only a single light source overhead and it isn't a building with, you know, lit up windows, I think this earlier frame, frame number two, is closer to perfect. But if you ever wonder why I don't gamble, this is why. The lighting may be just what I want, but of course, on this frame only, a gust of wind picked up right when I opened the shutter. And so my beautiful trees turned into a hot mess of motion blur. I'm trying to talk myself into liking the motion blur, but it's not going well. So this one might be a dud. Frame number one isn't too far off from perfect. In fact, in my quieter moments when no one's looking, I actually like this one the most. But number three is right up there. In fact, that one might be my favorite. And that is a wrap. Boy, it sure felt good to get out and take these photos. And as always, sure appreciate you coming along with me on this little journey. I do hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Hey, maybe out in the desert. Wouldn't that be something? Thank you.